Let's see, two groups of Gentiles. What does that mean? Well, I don't find that phrase in the scripture, and I don't. I try not to use that terminology of Gentiles. I just call it two conditions of Gentiles, and you can find those two conditions in uh, Ephesians. 2 verse 11 and 12 and the other condition would be in Genesis 12 3 let's look at Ephesians 2 11 and 12 first of all <clears throat> 11 and 12 shows us wherefore remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision and jumping down to verse 12 that at that time you were without Christ being a why were you without Christ? You were aliens from the commonwealth, not the nation. It doesn't say you have to be born in Israel or born an Israelite. You were you are aliens from the commonwealth, the wider commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. And let's go now to the other type of Gentile, Gen, uh, Genesis. 12 verse uh, let's read verses 2 and 3 if we could well we'll start with verse 1 and uh, it says <clears throat> now the Lord had said unto Abram get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation. That's a promise. Now this whole thing, these three verses, is a covenant. But within the covenant there are seven promises. Here's the first one. I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. That's the second one. Third one is, and make thy name great. The fourth one is, thou shalt be a blessing. And let me get the next verse up there. Did I count four or five? Let's see. I will make of thee a great nation. One will bless thee is two. Make thy name great is three. Thou shalt be a blessing is four. The fifth one here in the beginning of three, I will bless them that bless thee. Now, now the, the covenant is made and the promise is made to Israel, not to any Gentiles. But you can see that if Gentiles bless Israel, they're not... Uh, <laughs> They're blessed. They will receive a blessing from God. Those Gentiles will. Not that God made the covenant with them, but God promised to Israel that if some people come along and help you, here's some incentive for them too. You know, I'm going to bless them. Uh, so there were Jews. Uh, there were Greeks. They're called Greeks that sought the wisdom and knowledge of God. And they found that if they would bless Israel, with their tithes in the synagogues or whatever, they would receive a blessing from God. Now, this was before Paul you know, preached the, the saving message to him. Like, like we said when we started out about graphing, that was all past tense. Uh, but I will bless them that bless thee is the fifth thing, and curse him that curseth thee. So if someone comes along and tries to extinguish, exterminate Israel... They're under a curse. They were under a curse. Now, the thing is, Israel walked away from that covenant. That's the sixth one. The, the seventh one is, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Those are the seven promises. But Israel walked away from that covenant. It doesn't help to bless Israel anymore. And you could tell from Iraq, you know, bombing scuds into uh, Israel, they weren't annihilated. Uh, certainly not by God. Uh, later on, they faced a war with us, the United States, I should say. Uh, but, uh, you know, they're still in power over there. Uh, they, those promises are on hold until Israel is in favor uh, with God again. It, right now, Israel is not God's people. And... God said, I will not be your God. That's in prophecy, and it happened uh, at, at the time when Israel committed their unforgivable sin. Their unforgivable sin was the sin Christ gave them in, in, uh, or told to them in Matthew 12, 31 and 32, that if you blaspheme or even speak against the Holy Ghost, it won't be forgiven you. 
And that's what they did in Acts 7 when they stoned Stephen, speaking the words, the very words of the Holy Ghost to them. The high priest himself uh, initiated that stoning. He was there in, in uh, well, in Acts 7 verse 1. He's verified as being there. Uh, what verses in Acts? Uh, read, read chapter 6 and 7. Uh, 6 is a short chapter and it shows uh, who the people are that are involved. And verse seven, uh, chapter 7 verse 1 shows the high priest is involved. And then Stephen gives that long, uh, almost like a repeating narrative of uh, Israel's constant going away from God, being brought back, going away from God, being brought back, going away. They, their propensity was just to go away from God. And that's why the, all these statements, when John the Baptist appears on the scene, repent, change your mind, don't go after all these other gods, make God, the, the creator God, your God, Jehovah God. And so he gives this long sermon from Acts 7 verse 2 through Acts, oh, about 51, uh, 7 verse 51, and from 51 on through 59 shows that they they just uh, rejected the Holy Ghost. They became low am I at that point. Uh, they were a fallen nation. They were never again offered the kingdom that that Peter had offered them in, in, on Pentecost Day there in the temple in Acts 2 and Acts 3. They weren't offered the kingdom anymore. They will be. They will return to the Lord when, when the Lord awakens them and pours out on them a spirit of grace and of supplication, uh, according to Zechariah 12.10. But that's not until after you and I, well, if you're a saved person, believing that Christ died for your sins and that that's all that will save you, uh, we'll be caught up before then, caught up to heaven according to 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. So, uh, let's see. Jesus save us a free gift, gave us a free gift of salvation and also came that we have more abundant life. Um, you know, receiving the, the gospel is all that saves you and gives you the, the eternal life of Christ within you. It's true, we are saved by grace, and uh, and you don't have to be a right divider to be saved by grace, to believe on the grace of God through Jesus Christ having died for our sins. Uh, but being a right divider does show how that's the gospel that is in effect today, that does work today, that God is saving people by today. Um, and uh, what's a right divider? Uh, well, let me just get my poster up again here hold on a minute and we'll look at 2 Timothy 2.15 <coughs> 2 Timothy 2.15 and it reads oh thank you that'll help um, study study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth well you know, there are other places that tell us to take note of who's being spoken to, like in John 21, there by the seaside, uh, and the Lord tells Paul, uh, <laughs> the Lord tells Peter uh, to feed my sheep, and then Peter says, well, what about this man, the, the disciple you love, and what should he do? And the Lord says, you know, basically he says, what I tell him, I tell him. What I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So what we need to do is find out what in the scriptures was told to us, to Gentiles, not to the Jews. Uh, we, we need to find out what the Jews were told, but understand that was their instructions that they failed from. And find out what happened after that. And one thing that happened is in Acts 9, Paul was saved as a sinner, not as a law keeper, not as keeping the kingdom, uh, you know, Israel's doctrine. He was unsavable and unforgivable in Israel's doctrine. He had committed Israel's unforgivable sin. But 
the Lord saved him, and it says, For I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. The Lord made him especially our apostle. And so we need to listen to what he says. Another, another uh, confirmation that we need to pay attention, our doctrine comes from Christ through Paul. That's good. That's good there. Oh, take note of what is written, where it's written, especially in the timeline, if it was written before Christ came or after Christ and before Paul was saved or after Paul was saved or after, if it's talking about conditions after the rapture, things like that. You have to take note of the chronology of, of events there uh, and to whom it was written. Who is it addressed to? But uh, if you look at the verse, I, well, let me post it again so it's down in front here. Um, and this is Galatians 2.9. When James, Cephas, and John, they're, they're all part of that 12, uh, Israel's 12 apostles. When, <coughs> excuse me just a minute. Uh, Paul speaking here, and he says, When James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, unto Paul, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go to the heathen. Well, that's who God had sent them to. And they unto the circumcision. They unto the, So they confined themselves. You know, Cephas, that's Peter. He had been given the keys of the kingdom to bind and to loose. And he was binding the circumcision, the true believers, those that met there in the church in Jerusalem, church of God in Jerusalem, those were the ones they were to go to. And they were basically ministering to, the, to their group and not evangelizing anymore. That was the, the uh, interruption in what's often called the Great Commission. It would be Israel's commission or the Apostles' commission. So you come to James or you come to First Peter. Who did Peter say he was going to write to, going to go to and write to? He's going to the circumcision, writing to the circumcision. Uh, same thing with Jude, one of the apostles, writing to the circumcision. John, uh, the Revelation, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Gospel of John, they're all written for and about Israel. Uh, if you go through First John with that in mind that it was written to Israel after Israel is in the tribulation and all those things that look like they may be gospels you know this uh, a person that acts this way is a son of God or whatever those are really tests for people in the, in the great tribulation to find out if the person knocking on their door for help is a true believer or is someone trying to find out about you and turn you in uh, you know, when you read through it with that in mind, it's not uh, telling you to confess your sins. Uh, it's not talking to you. It's talking to those in the tribulation. Uh, Israel. Remember, uh, there was a, an acceptable year of the Lord that was the start. At, you know, until they rejected the Lord at the end of that first year, uh, Peter said, this is that which was prophesied of the prophet Joel. Acts 2.16 he connects with the, those occurrences there with the beginning of the tribulation. And it of course stopped when Israel fell and, and committed that unforgivable sin. Fell as a nation and uh, were no longer the way to God. The way, the, their doctrine is put on hold uh, there's that great statement about how to think, you know, how to apply rightly dividing, how to understand what's written to us and what's not. A look at it by uh, Miles Coverdale back in 1535. It shall greatly help thee to understand Scripture if thou mark not only what is spoken or written, and that's what most people do. They say, you know, he's... Uh, uh, seek and you shall find well that's a promise to me that if I seek something I'm going to find it it's not a promise to you It was to that's Matthew 7-7 Matthew was one of the twelve apostles he 
what's it say in Galatians 2.9? He goes unto the circumcision and writes to the circumcision. That's a circumcision promise. For when the circumcision was rising, not when they fell, not after they fell, uh, that was salvation during Israel's rise. After Israel fell, well, that's what Romans 11.11 11 covers, isn't it? Uh, or begins to cover. Look at what it says there uh, before I go on with that statement from Coverdale. I say then, have they stumbled? Yes, Israel stumbled. Did they stumble that they should fall? No, they didn't have to fall after they stumbled. They could have caught themselves. When did they stumble? They stumbled at the stumbling stone, Jesus Christ, when they crucified him. Have they stumbled? Yes. That they should fall? No. They didn't have to fall from being God's chosen people. God forbid. But rather through their fall. So they did fall. Through their fall salvation is come unto the Gentiles. For to provoke them to jealousy. Well, in a sense, you know, if you look at Romans 2.25, anyone that doesn't fulfill the law is called uncircumcision. And so... You know, nobody can come to God that way. You can only come to God through the way, the pattern that Christ started by saving Paul on the road to Damascus. Saving a sinner. And Paul says, I was the first saved that way. I was the protos. I was the chief of sinners. Uh, it shall greatly help thee to understand script Scripture if thou mark not only what is spoken or written, but of whom? Who is he talking about? Is he talking about me or, or somebody? Some, you know, there's some statements about Edom, and then it says later that Edom was destroyed. Uh, it, it, it was, if the statements were to Edom, how could they apply to me if they were only to Edom and there's no more Edom? Uh, but of whom? To whom? With what words? At what time? Where? to what intent and with what uh, with what circumstances considering what goeth before and what followeth after and those last two might be <laughs> uh, they're just as important as all they're all important um, but that's what you you don't go through a checklist with make a list out of those things and check each scripture but you keep those things in mind when you're reading uh, and remember that the, the Word of God is a spiritual document. Uh, make sure you're saved if you want to try and understand it. It's spiritually discerned, and you have to have the Spirit of God within you to understand it. But, even if you don't, faith does come from hearing, and hearing from the Word of God. Romans 10:17. If you want to have more faith, read more of the Word of God, starting with Paul's epistles. They're the ones that have our doctrine to us, to Gentiles in it. 